Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Masters of the Air by Story Archives. I'm your host, Mario Busto, alongside the other host, Zachary Newton. Welcome back. Every once in a while, I have you, you way too loud on my headphones, and it's just like, the other host, <laughs> like surround sound. Is <laughs> yelling in your ear? Ears. It's crazy. Hey, uh, at least, at least up, you're not dude? telling me to speak up, so that's cool. No, yeah, it's better, for sure. Yeah. Um, we're back. Episode seven, part seven, I guess. Uh, Masters of the Air. It's just getting better and better. The, I'm getting more and more attached to the characters here. Mm. There's a lot going on. You got Buck and Bucky. And man, I'm always butchering the name of this thing. Stalag Luft Three, yeah. which is the German sort of... It's run by the German Air Force. And it is essentially where they're keeping all the POWs that they capture from probably the American Air Force, it seems. Uh, so, American and British, if I believe, because the British okay. were the ones that escaped, right? Yeah, they kind of mess it up for everybody. Like eighty of them <laughs> escape, because if you the first thing that they introduce really in this, uh, you know, in this stalag is the fact that because the Americans are holding so many of the German uh, POWs, they are not being treated too poorly in this one because mm -hmm. of that, right? Because those guys want their their units back as well, so. We kind of catch up with Buck and Bucky who have differing mindsets. Bucky wants to make a break for it. Buck, we find out, has proposed to Marge, who we only see briefly in the first episode. And Bucky sort of having this identity crisis, which is kind of... Did, didn't you get the feeling like this guy, the way they portray him on the show, is like, man, you have like zero perspective on the fact that you're in a stalag right now and you don't want to go home because you didn't leave a wife waiting for you or like a yeah. family waiting for you or even like, you know, I guess your loved ones. It doesn't have to be uh, a love interest, but he doesn't have anything waiting for him back home. So he's essentially saying like, I kind of don't want to leave this stalag right now. Like, well, what are we doing with that? I can't imagine that that was an actual feeling that he had. I'm assuming that you, you'd want to sort that shit out after you leave, you know? Like yeah, I'll go just go back to the UK and meet up with uh what was her name the Polina oh, the Polish name? girl I don't remember yeah, yeah. I don't remember but I I feel like I also got the sense from him that you know it wasn't just that he didn't want to leave in some cases like I mean he was really like in his feels uh in, in this episode he was yeah he was jealous about about things but at the same time he also just didn't seem to care about the risk right because there wasn't people back home so whatever like he was just like kind of in some cases ready to go and just like eh like it doesn't matter what's going to happen I he, got he does feeling. end up being right though i think in terms of needing to leave there because now that the british have escaped in mass like that it seems that these guys are probably gonna die in this camp if for specifically i mean they get threatened to be put in the hands of the gestapo or the um ss right so mm -hmm. Both. that's an yeah. issue so that's an issue if that were to occur, because I don't think that they're following, you know, gentlemanly wartime rules when it I comes to I think we know prisoners. they weren't. <laughs> yeah. Well, the guy in the, in the damn camp is like, I think we both don't want that because those guys will probably just kill you to not have to have the hassle mm. of taking care of prisoners. So yeah, yeah I'm assuming there's going to be a massive attempt to break out from Buck and Bucky and they're going to try to galvanize people to leave there oh we're so building up to it well they did have a tunnel in the british thing so are they going to build a tunnel for a year is it going to be a different way of escaping i feel like it's going to be a different way of escaping yeah i don't think we have that much time to build a tunnel at this point mm -hmm. um i kind of got the sense in part of this episode that they were just going to like kind of overrun the germans like it feels like the germans are rather <laughs> outnumbered right now yeah that's what it um, felt like for certain periods but then yeah. when you see the number of germans leaving the camp yeah it feels like that would have been the moment to do something yeah rather but it than just, when they it would have been ill prepared like you would have had like 10 guys <laughs> trying to do something trying to start like a prison riot and you're but, still in germany so like, how do you? Yeah, get that out too. Of <laughs> that too. You got to be lucky and uh, find somebody like Quinn did apparently. Yeah, which I'm a little Quinn, bummed about. Go yeah, ahead. so was I. I mean, well, good for them, but well, yeah, I'm, I'm happy they're back too, right? Like, I'll say that. Well, we didn't even see them. Not even a close up. It was just them riding their bikes, and we kind of got a quick explanation that Quinn and Bailey made it back. Those were the two mm -hmm. characters who pretty much went from Belgium and got passages. Uh, safe passage to France, and we didn't see them again. So, 
Yep. They pretty much, they did escape and we find out that there's a rule back, well, there was a rule during World War II where guys who returned out of German controlled territory were not allowed to fly another mission because if they were to have been captured again, they would have known too much about the escape routes and gotten the people who are helping um, troops from the friendly allies uh, to get out of those countries. So they pretty much get a get a jail free card and go home, which good for them. I mean, they, I think that kind of qualifies for serving en- enough of your country if you escape enemy Death. controlled territory. Yeah, I would agree with that. It's a nice it's a nice ticket out. Um, much I, I feel like probably easier to achieve than hitting 25 missions but at yeah, the same time yeah. i don't i don't know the odds for that uh, and well, by the tw- way in this episode yeah. we also find out that they upped the mission requirements from 25 to 30 which doesn't sound that bad honestly until you put it in terms of yeah. percentage that's a 20 percent increase in missions that you need to fly yeah i was about to correct you on it that it's no longer 25 it's 28 to 30 28 for the guys who got caught in the crossover and then correct. 30 for the newbies yeah, which is crazy because you have some guys there who you know kind of spaz out about it when they've flown eighteen missions and now they got to fly another uh, ten in yeah. order to get there instead of seven. So that's that's a big difference when you're seeing these you know the Black Monday mission where they fly to Berlin and fifteen forts don't make half, it back. Pretty much half of hundred and yeah, hundred and fifty yeah. men died on that mission. So um, crazy, and they do set the stage of where we are. This is early nineteen forty four. Um, this is pretty much right on the cusp of, I guess, uh, full on, the full on invasion of Europe, right? Uh, D-Day we're coming we're out at the brink. Yeah, D Day's ar- around the corner from this point, mm-hmm. and we did get a little sneak preview of, um, because think about it, we see the air missions at the beginning of this season, and the B seventeens are going up there with no protection. It's just freaking fifteen forts of B seventeens flying these bomber missions solo. But now you get the innovation of the P-51 Mustang come into the war. Heck and yeah. They're breaking, yeah, they're breaking a hole right into the German. Pretty much they secure uh, air control for the mm. Allied forces with the P-51s. And we do get a little sneak peek in the next episode that we're going to get the Tuskegee Airmen, which I'm delighted about. I did not I'm know excited. that that was going to be a focus of the show, but that's pretty awesome. I swear I got a glimpse of the Tuskegee Airmen in one of the ads and I was I've been waiting for them to make an appearance in this entire show so far. So I'm happy that it's finally happening. Um though I, eh, I mean I don't know that much about the history of the Tuskegee Airmen but we also learn in this episode um that now the bombers are basically going to be used as bait uh to mm-hmm. lure the uh, German planes out so that they could destroy them and gain air superiority. And it's only now that, you know, the bombers are being used as bait that the Tuskegee airmen are coming into play. So should the, they, these next <laughs> few episodes should be insane. It should be wild. I thought it was a pretty incredible honorable move on Rosie's part to get to 25 and then say, I'm going to double it up, you know? Uh, Absolutely. Which is just crazy. He didn't even, he didn't even say, I'll do five more to hit 30. He was like, yeah. no, I'll it's do like, another. Let's double it again. I'm going to go back. Yeah. I mean, he's easily turned into my favorite character on the show so far. Yeah. Uh, up till this point. Uh, speaking of other favorite characters, I was wrong about Crosby. He does end up having an affair with A.M. Westgate. Um, you can't really judge anybody in this, in this situation. Crazy know? time, she, man. She, uh. you know, <laughs> she, she's pretty. They're living on the edge, nearly dying every single day. Um, you're pretty much at the end of the world. This was this is not like modern days where you're instantly connected with people across the entire world in two mm-hmm. seconds. This is a waiting weeks between letters. So yeah, I still want to know what A.M. Westgate does. Like, what is her role in the war? What does she do for the Brits? Because it's so mysterious. I'm having a feeling that she's some legendary figure in the british military you know yeah i'm not sure i mean she definitely seems important Mm -hmm. i'll give you that i agree with that i know i know you mentioned the tuskegee airmen that Mm -hmm. uh you know we got a glimpse of in the next episode that said if you look at the the little sneak peek can i say what i think i saw sure i i feel i feel like she's a spy I don't know for spy who. Spy for the Brits. 
a spy oh, for the he, Brits. I'm hoping. I'm he's hoping. Not an enemy but spy, bro. <laughs> mm, I don't know. I don't no, know. I'm just. I'm just no, saying. No. I, I. I was. I wasn't paying full attention, and I swear I. I heard some. Uh, some words from a, a a man with a German accent, and I. I swear mm, they were no. talking to her. So I'm that not quite insane. sure. It that would be insane. insane but twist. but it <clears throat> fucking makes sense. <laughs> Because, because look at who she's with. Just, she's with Crosby. Like, what better person to be with than the guy drawing the plans for the attacks? Ah, yeah, you make a good point there. You do make a good point there. That's, I don't, that's I don't, why. That's what I thought. I, I really hope it's are not. We the putting, case. Are we making a wager right now? You know, I've had just enough <laughs> Irish whiskey to make that bet. Um, she's not a spy. I'm taking. I'm planting my flag on the. She's not a spy. All right, hold on, hold on. Are you saying she's not a spy, or are you saying she's not a spy from the for the Germans? For the, she's not a spy for the for the. So enemy. she's yeah, a yeah. she's a spy for the Brits, mm -hmm. and I'm saying she's a spy for the Germans. Which, again, I I don't want to be true, but I I don't know, man. I just got this weird feeling in my bones that she's she i mean she's with crosby for a reason like she kind of just appeared out of nowhere which is fine like it's not like that's bad but i'm very happy to take my side on the bed here i'm know. pretty i am pretty confident that i'm correct on this one hey man uh, look like i've had a few good runs last year you got to get a few good runs this year it'll switch I'm, back at some point so i'm going for a three p i'm going for a three p right now uh if you want to stay tuned with our our waging uh, record you can catch also our series of constellation that we're covering also kind of dominating the apple charts if you're into sci-fi and mystery that is up your alley good acting good writing very good show I, i've gotten just about everybody i know hooked on it uh in the last week so uh check it out when you get a chance oh uh should we talk about some other shows real quick while, we, while we're in the middle of this i know people yeah, may not be go, go ahead now, and but... talk about them while i note down our first bet <clears throat> for the show by the way coming okay, to you we'll, in part seven we'll need about two more which I don't, I, they got to be appropriate bets because this is nonfiction. But uh, nonfiction, yeah, we don't really do wagers on nonfiction. But the the, the AM Westgate one makes sense to do. Yeah. Um, other shows. I just started a show on HBO. Fantastic. Uh, to the point where I don't know if it's an episodic type of show that I mm. would do. Although we did do Peaky Blinders, so it would totally make sense to do yeah, this Peaky one episodically. Is badass. Tokyo Vice, HBO, fantastic. I've had uh, a couple of you tell me to watch Shogun on FX. I haven't started it yet. It's on my list. I'm thinking I'm going to let it run for a little bit. Uh, it's inevitable that I do watch that. But Tokyo Vice, incredible. I'm about to finish season one. Uh, I think I may pause at the end of season one for y'all and, and do a little season one recap. Uh, it's based on a true story on a, an American journalist who goes to Japan to essentially kind of get to the underbelly of the yakuza in uh, tokyo in the late 90s it's it's fantastic i'm loving it i'm into gang shows like that check it out as always if you're enjoying the show five stars help a lot leave us comments and if you want to get in touch with us email us at contact at soapbox house we do have a couple of emails we do got to go through some comments we'll do that at the end of the show pertaining to masters of the air and for those of you who reached out to our Constellation series, I'll get back to you there on our next episode. And yeah, yeah, just uh, we always appreciate the the loving comments. Uh, we even appreciate the hating comments. Uh, we got one. Uh, <laughs> they're always funny. It's always funny to know. Like it's the, it's it's so predictable. The people who are the most easily offended. It's just so hilarious to me at this point. But uh, you're gonna yeah. have to show me this one uh, off air. I want to know. The, hey, look, the most offended are usually the most intolerant. So they always like preach tolerance, but they're the most intolerant. They're like, you know, you lost me when you started diving into this. I'm like, all right, I didn't give a shit. But <laughs> I wish I could, I wish I could directly correspond like within. That's the one thing Spotify for podcasters lacks because oh, we, get a, we get a, a handful of comments on the episodes. Most, like, I'd say 80% of them are positive, and then Probably you get 20% more. that. It's Twenty percent that are that are douches, but yeah. uh, you can't respond directly, and so we can't correspond with the audience out there who who have genuinely good comments on the show. And then we could also, you know, poke fun at the haters too. But yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm All right, you. you know, you know, we do have some live streaming capabilities, and the Oscars are coming up. When are the Oscars? I have to ask. April. Man. April. April. We do have a lot of homework we have to do. There's a lot okay. of good shows coming out. You got the Benjamin Franklin show coming out on Apple TV. It's a mini series starring Looks Michael Douglas. Solid. You got the Manhunt featuring Crosby. 
the actor who plays Crosby is going to be playing John Wilkes Booth. And it's all about the manhunt for John Wilkes Booth post the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. Um, and there's just so many good shows out there right now. So stay tuned. Lots to do, lots to watch. I kind of want to do our live stream Oscar watch party where we like get in suits and watch the Oscars live and commentate. It could get dangerous, but you know, uh, it'll be, it should be fun. We'll have to have fun. some like whiskey bets or something like that. Yeah, every time somebody yeah. says something stupid, you have a drink. I'm yeah, down. I'll, I'll admit though, I put on a little weight since I bought my suits about <laughs> 10 years ago. Well, it's a good thing that nobody can see from the waist down <laughs> when we do a podcast. Yeah, I'm not so, wearing any pants you know, right now. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm wearing I'm shorts. Kidding. So, you know, it, it, it is what it is. But yeah, we can do a drinking game. I'm on my last high noon, Zach. So, you know, speaking of wagers, I'm going to come collecting pretty soon. You've got to slide because I just got my tentative walkthrough date for the townhome. So, mm. like two weeks okay. from tomorrow, actually, or today, mm. if you're listening to this on Tuesday, the 5th of May. Got you. Yeah, that'll be the last episode. Or March. Of the wow, that's right a there. bit off. My, my apologies. I was trying to. I was trying to scare the audience and say that was like the last episode of Story Archives. But yeah, I'm moving to to Antarctica. There's no internet. Yeah, no internet. But just kidding, though. Uh, all right, let's continue onward here. We were talking about AM Westgate. You wrote down the wager. We're good there. I wrote down the wager. Wager number one. Okay. What did you think when uh, I they were there was a change of CEO at the base and Bennett mm-hmm. takes over? Which I gotta say, you know. I appreciate the courage of it. He has to come pretty much break the news to the men, which he knows is not going to be fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, to be honest, for that presentation, I probably would have spared the whole pomp and circumstance of doing the whole curtain reveal. I would have mm-hmm. kind of just had that curtain <laughs> open already. Yeah. You know, like, everybody oh, realize it as they walk in the, in the room yeah. again. Fuck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Instead of just like, Berlin, it's just like again, you know, like. <laughs> and it's on, the same path. Yeah. It's a, we're going to take the same route, boys. And he pretty much admits to um, Rosie at the end that the strategy is to use these B-17s as yeah. as bait. So they're pretty much, the target is not really, it is Berlin, but at the same time, it's to eliminate the Luftwaffe, pretty much the entire German air fleet. So I'm yep. assuming that's why the Tuskegee Airmen come in in this season. Where, the, and that was the point I was making. Yeah. Like, I feel I feel bad that this this seems to be the circumstance in which they're coming in. Again, I don't know too much of the, the true history of the Tuskegee Airmen beyond knowing the name of the Tuskegee Airmen. But the, I mean, it just, it's an unfortunate uh, uh, time to bring them in. It just makes it? feel like they've been brought in for bait. Oh no, they're not being brought into for bait, dude. They're the ones flying the P fifty ones. Are they really? Yeah. Okay. Well, then fly- thank you. F- I'm. I, all right. I feel much better about yeah. America. Then thank you. <laughs> yeah. No. No. They're they're flying them in Tuskegee Airmen fi- the fighter jets, bro. Hold on. We gotta look this up real quick. I, I banter, Zach. The, banter. Well, I was just gonna say the the way that I read the uh, the little sneak peek preview of the next episode, it was right after hearing that like, oh yeah, we're just going back up for bait, and I'm like, ah, is that why they're really bringing them in? So, yeah, look, this the Tuskegee Airmen flew hundreds of patrol and attack missions for the 12th Air Force, flying P40 and P39. Airplanes. Wonderful. All right. Bef- that na- before right. they were hold on, hold on. Before they were reassigned to the 15th Air Force to escort B17 and B24 heavy bombers using P47 and P51 airplanes. So, nah, bro, they're coming in as the escorts. Good. They're not coming in as the as the bait. I'm so. glad. I'm excited to see uh to see them in action. I have not seen any shows around um the Tuskegee Airmen. At least not that there I'm was aware. a mo- there was a movie uh um, yeah by george lucas right was it george lucas no I there was a- there, no i swear there was a george yes lucas there was a george Airman lucas one movie. but i think there's a better one that came out later well, um, probably i mean I, I don't know that george lucas has had that many great movies beyond star wars oh bro don't don't talk i'm just i'm just I'm, I'm just messing i'm just messing <laughs> <laughs> that's that is not I'm just the guy i'm to trying to get somebody to respond you know in the comments right that's not the that is not who i want to <laughs> i disagree with zach here guys you aim that one you aim that nah, critique at zach. Nah, nah, nah. george I, I like george lucas he's got some, i i have been wanting to watch um what was his for the first movie that he made american graffiti um i've never yeah. watched that but i wanted to go back and watch that one it's, it's on netflix i believe oh. um do you think we're going to see Rosie again in these missions coming up or because he's going to be the CEO of the 350th, uh, this might be the end of, of Rosie on the show? Man, I've, no, I think we're going to see him go up again. Um, I can't 
see him not going up. Like, I feel like his whole reasoning for going back was because he was like, guys, like, that's effed up. Like, it was 25 missions, now it's 30, he might up it again. Like, no, I'm going to go back and fly with my boys, make sure that they make it back or have the best chance of making it back. I mean, he's, he's a great pilot from what I've seen in the show. So I think he's going back up. Yeah, they literally call him the best uh, B-17 pilot that they had ever seen. I forget who mentions that. Oh, the guy at the bar mentions that when he's yeah. talking to the newly enlisted um, soldiers there. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, yeah, he's, it's, no, it's no myth. He actually was the only one who came back yeah. in that mission. Um, Red Tails. Red Tails, Red Tails yeah. is yeah. from George Lucas. Lucas Films. I want to talk a little bit. I I think that we're going to have to get some sort of resolution here with Luf to 3, Stalag Luf 3 and figure out what's going to happen there. I don't imagine like like we already know, if these guys make it out of here alive, mm -hmm. um they're going home. They don't get to fly again. Uh based off of the rules True. that we just saw from Quinn and Bailey. Um albeit they are in very precarious uh, waters at this point uh they're in german controlled territory even if they do escape the stalag it's that's just the first step of getting out of the country yeah and um yeah i i, it's, I find it hard to believe that they're both gonna escape uh buck and bucky i hope i hope they do the uh the air raids seem to be coming pretty close to where they are i mean you can literally hear the bombing off in the distance well, I think that's fighting. that is Berlin. Uh, that's Berlin, according to, um, according to what's in line with the yeah, with what's going on in the story. So it's, yeah. the timelines are are completely in sync there. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, it must be Berlin. I guess they're in the they're they're in the heart of it, eh? Yeah, yeah. And then in terms of what's his name, uh, Crosby. What's next for him, really? I mean, he is he is navigator here, but he has this pretty deep affair going on with A.M. Westgate, and I don't know if that's gonna. I mean, I don't know if that's gonna be kind of just like a, a dream, like a fever dream type of thing, where he just kind of gets over it at the end. But he does seem pretty obsessed, and maybe she's gonna have to be the one to set him straight towards the end. Yeah, I'm not quite sure i hope that like there's more to the story than just this little like fling that we're seeing right now because i really don't want to have another quinn moment in this series where it's just like if you blink you miss it and by the way they made it back okay on to the next piece of the story so i i, I don't know I, I would imagine that there's there's going to be more development with her um and i just don't know what it's going to be yeah yeah. All right. I think that just about sums up everything that occurred in this episode. Uh, do you have any final thoughts before we go to uh, categories? I do. I want to try and build my own radio. That looks pretty freaking cool. Yeah. I was going to say Buck truly can do just about anything. I mean, yeah. he's building radios. You know, he's pretty ingenious. Yeah. My dad built one way back in the day. Um, so I've, I, I got to try and figure it out. Sounds sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Get categories. Into categories. All right. Yes. All right. Let's start with favorite scene of the episode. I got mine. I like this just hands down. You can go first. Rosie, man, doubling up. Wow, we have the same one. Um <laughs> close second was close second. The building of the radio. <laughs> If you're, I of course you would like that being the techie, like yeah. just like the person who likes to see how tech is built. Like you would be the it. one who who enjoys that. Yeah. Um, second best, man. I, it's Rosie's is such a far and above like all the others. I know, right? All right, you know, I've, I've got I've got another runner up. Okay, it's just the absolute. I, I, I like. Hold on, hold on. Okay. You say Rosie doubling up. I'll say runner up is Rosie making it back from the twenty fifth. Like that's probably the. Oh, that's best. a good one. That's a that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, the 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 other runner up that I was going to throw out there was just the utter chaos in the air that we saw. Like, can you imagine flying and trying to shoot the right freaking plane? Mm -hmm. 
with just all of that going. Like, dude, like I was lost. I'm like, I've been wondering that the entire show. Mm. If, like, if how do you know any, you're not shooting the wrong one? I just always wonder, like, is there how many how many situations of friendly fire were there in, in these dog fights? You know? Yeah, I'm sure there was some unintentional. Like, there's there's For just sure. no way there wasn't. I mean. I feel like on some of the older planes, you could shoot your own plane with some of the angles you could get with these guns. So yeah, it's bound to yeah, happen definitely. at some point. Definitely. I mean, the the next question would be best character of the episode, but I, I think we're both going to agree on that one too. It's Rosie. It's got to be of Rosie, course. man. Absolutely. He, he's, he is actually, I think, one of my favorite I think he's my favorite character of the show right now, honestly. Like, I like Buck. I like Bucky. They're cool. But Rosie's just, like, a badass. Like, and he's also cool, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, he mm -hmm. seems very heroic. Rosie? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. He seems honorable. Just honorable. He does. He does. <clears throat> Anything else? Because I don't have any lines that stand out. From I don't have any lines that stand out, so I'll pull... Uh, one out of the books from Constellation. Who do you think has it worst right now? Worst. I don't think you can get much worse than uh Buck and Bucky in a in a style, To be honest, I don't. I don't know about that one. I I feel like the guy that probably has it worst is the guy that just doubled up for another thirty missions now, not twenty five. Yeah. Yeah, because that, dude, that's a, that's risky. I think I'd rather do that than be at the hands of the Germans. You know, yeah, you'd rather you'd rather I mean, take your chances trying to blow planes out of the sky. Well, they were shooting down the parachutes in this episode. That's like, true. In that, in the Black Monday mission, um, they were saying that they were even shooting down the guys who were coming down on parachutes. So, yeah, yeah, it's an ugly part of the war right now. Yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, that's I mean that, that's all the categories I got. It's hard to pick a line from this show. I was looking through our emails. Let's see if I can find some comments here. All if, right. Uh, I was having some login issues a second ago, but yeah, so was I. I got kicked out of Apple. I don't know why. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Apple's always the ones that are causing the issues. Like it's never anybody else. It's always Apple. Listen, I'm I'm I, I'm I'm in involved with software development. A hundred percent agree. It's always Apple that slows you down. You can have a plan. Yeah, we're going to release on this date. But man, once you get to releasing your Apple app, like, yeah, we went through like three weeks of reviews and audits and this and that. It's a nightmare. All right, Zach, you got a thanks from Tracy Frazier, who says, thanks for mentioning Hogan's Heroes on the last episode. Oh, you're, you're one of my favorites. So you get that, Zach. You get a throwback compliment there. Uh, we also got a comment from... Elia, yo, will you do Constellation? No one has picked it up yet. Well, we've got some good news for you, pal. We have already done all four episodes of Constellation, and hopefully you have noticed by now. Um, a quick shout out to Jonathan Buckley. Thank you very much for always showing love on the videos. Let's see, who else do we have here? Um, I love the comments. It's, it's always fun to get through them. Okay, Mr. Bismarck, two weeks ago, episode five. The oh. sort of maneuvers Rosenthal was pulling are only really possible when you're the only plane left. If you're still flying in a box with the multiple other aircraft close by, you risk collision. Yeah, good point. That's when Rosie had his iconic mission where he was the only one who came back. Yeah. So, yeah. And lastly, yeah. Uh, thank you, Tobias, for always giving us those algorithm acceleration comments. We, we appreciate that. Thank you very much. Love it. All right, Zach, anything to add or should I... Uh, do a little housekeeping before we close you know but before you do a little housekeeping bef before we close um mm -hmm. the band of brothers show follows the 101st airborne division mm -hmm. and in saving private ryan private james francis ryan is a part of the 101st airborne division he's mm -hmm. not also involved in easy company which is in band of brothers but I did just watch um, Saving Private Ryan again. I thought I hadn't seen it, but it had just been a long time. It kind of came back to mm -hmm. me as I was watching it. Great mm -hmm. movie, by the way. 
very interesting to kind of see that as I'm watching uh, Masters of the Air, knowing, especially after this episode, knowing that like they're they're waiting to deploy troops until they get air superiority. It's just kind of crazy to kind of see how that unfolds. Great movie. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. And if you have Apple TV Plus, it's free on Apple TV Plus right now. Mm. So give it a watch. That's free all Free marketing. Free marketing for Apple always. I know. Um, they should pay us, really. Yeah. Uh, Saving Private Ryan, probably the best World War II movie out there. Maybe 1917 is like second place. Second place. Wow. Okay. It's damn good. It's really good, 1917. I don't know. Um. The scene always gets me is him Private Ryan the old with the old man at Arlington. Uh, oh, it does. It gets it gets you like choked up. It's just crazy. Oh yeah, big time, big time. Um, other stuff going on. Yeah, we're just all up in the world wars right now. I started reading uh, some Hemingway again. I started uh, a book I've had on the shelf for a minute there. I've read a good amount of Hemingway actually. Uh, of I'm I'm not like a I'm not bougie, but I do really have enjoyed his his books. I'm reading For Whom the Bell Tolls at the moment. I've read Farewell to Arms, Sun Also Rises, and that. Mm. Uh, and usually his books always revolve around like a soldier yeah. uh, either getting off of service or in the middle of a mission or something. It's it's always usually that. And then it kind of transitions into something else entirely. At yeah. least the three that I just mentioned kind of. Well, Sun Also Rises doesn't really do that. But anyways, um, doing reading reading that, um, I actually had to pick it up again because I had forgotten everything that I had read when I last <laughs> picked it up. Um, watching Tokyo Vice, I am about to finish season one there. It's fantastic. Uh, I don't think there's ever been a show. I know there was a Jared Leto movie that, that kind of tackled the Yakuza. Um, mm. But I haven't really seen anything that, that stood out to me. I haven't watched that movie either. So I think I might dive into that after. Uh, I definitely want to do some coverage on Tokyo Vice. And there's just a bunch of good shows coming out. We're in the middle of Constellation. Make sure you catch our coverage there. You got plenty of commentary coverage to uh, keep you company while you watch that show. And we're posting Peaky Blinders on YouTube. We're trying to put out all of our Peaky Blinders content before the Oscars in April to catch up right in time with Killian Murphy winning Oscars, the Oscar for Best Actor. So stay tuned on there. As always, if you're liking this content, subscribe, rate the show, and um, share it with a friend. It really helps. So Two friends. Anyways, two friends? Okay. Yeah. All right. Until next time, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. And Zach, uh, to your outro. For sure. Well, thank you for listening to this episode of Masters of the Air by Story Archives. You can find this podcast anywhere you find podcasts, Apple and Spotify podcasts primarily. You can visit us on YouTube at Soapbox Podcast Network. Our website is soapbox.house. You can email us at contact at soapbox.house. And we do have a link in the description below to sign up for our quarterly newsletter. Perfect. Until next time, y'all take care and see you on Constellation. Peace.